Sanitation, it is complex. Since the late 60s, there have been multiple international development agendas towards providing adequate sanitation. Despite these efforts, close to half the world is still struggling with achieving safely managed sanitation. My name is Abhishek Narayan, and I'm a researcher at Sandek. Cities across the global south face this common challenge of sanitation poverty, whether it is the hanging toilets in Dhaka or the flying toilets in Nairobi. However, the problems causing poor sanitation are often different. They may be one or a combination of the following. Inequity, focus on toilets only, inappropriate technologies, inadequate planning, poor policies and regulation, lack of financial and human capacity. So if the problems are so complex and diverse, how could the solutions be so simple and narrow? We need a holistic approach that can tackle the complexity of these issues. That is, simultaneously plugging these different leaks. And that's what Citywide Inclusive Sanitation, or CWISE, is all about. In this video, we will describe the emergence and uptake of Citywide Inclusive Sanitation, explain the CWISE approach, break down the Manila principles on CWISE. CWISE was conceived in a conference on urban sanitation in 2016 by a few experts who were convinced that business as usual was not working. In 2017, a call to action was released and was followed by a billion dollar commitment for the cause in 2018. In 2019, the Manila Principles on CYS was launched, and in 2020, academic literature on CYS started being published. In 2021, we can see a number of pilot and mainstream projects on CYS being commissioned and implemented all across the world. CYS is defined as an approach to urban sanitation where all members of the city have equitable access to adequate and affordable improved sanitation services through appropriate systems of all scales, both sewered and non-sewered technologies. And all this without any contamination to the environment along the entire sanitation value chain. CYS as an approach is simply a move away from conventional infrastructure focused sewers only approach to a more service based context appropriate approach with a mix of different sanitation solutions. Just like how plugging one or two of these holes, the water leak cannot be stopped, we need to simultaneously address the multiple different aspects of urban sanitation in order to truly make progress in achieving the SDGs on universal access to safely managed sanitation. Now, let us look at how the CYS approach does all this by breaking down the CYS concept into more easily understandable principles. Firstly, equity. Sanitation needs to be equitable, which means no one is left behind. But often, the vulnerable communities, those discriminated by gender, age, geography, socioeconomic reasons, religion, caste, etc., are not adequately considered when planning and implementing sanitation solutions. Equity does not only mean that everyone is given an equal level of infrastructure. Rather, it means that they are given an equal access to service in terms of availability, accessibility, affordability, and acceptability. Sanitation needs to be planned for the whole city, not just in households, but also in schools, healthcare facilities, commercial and public spaces that cater to the needs of not just residents, but also visitors and migrant workers. Secondly, environmental and public health. Sanitation does not end at the toilet. It merely begins there. 
the whole sanitation service chain of toilet, containment, emptying, transport, treatment, and end use needs to be well planned. If we only look at latrine access, then we're just displacing the problem, not managing it. This puts both public health and environmental health at risk. Sanitation and environmental health are closely linked. Take a look at this recent study, which shows the different pathways through which fecal contamination can end up in the environment. Therefore, we need to address not just SDG 6.2 on access, but also SDG 6.3 on managing pollution. Thirdly, mix of technologies. There are multiple factors that determine the appropriateness of sanitation technologies. For example, population density, social cultural behavior, water availability, financial and spatial constraints. When these factors vary according to the local needs, why should sanitation solutions be the same? Even within the same city, different neighborhoods can have different types and scales of technologies. For example, in the same city, centralized, decentralized, on-site, container-based sanitation, among others, can coexist. But this combination has to be carefully implemented according to the contextual needs. Further, we need to move away from a waste creation model to a resource recovery model. And, and this way, we can increase the circularity of the sanitation service chain and create additional revenue streams. Next, we have comprehensive planning. CYS has laid bare the complexities of urban sanitation. With more explicit targets, we need more comprehensive planning. CYS does not just look at short-term answers, but has plans for the long-term, keeping future scenarios in mind. CYS does not just focus on the silo of sanitation in cities, but expands to environmental sanitation that includes other areas such as water supply, solid waste management, stormwater drainage, among others. This way, many co-benefits from these synergies could be gained. But for all this, we need to bridge top-down and bottom-up planning approaches, one that involves the communities as much as it involves the technocrats who design the technical solutions. Next, we have monitoring and accountability. There's a quote that says, if you cannot measure it, you cannot improve it. Monitoring ensures that the performance of sanitation systems and services are tracked. The operation and maintenance are carried out for long-term sustainability. The capacities of sanitation service providers and regulators are essential for this. Authorities need to keep clear targets, ring-fenced funds for sanitation-related activities. All this requires institutional arrangements that have clear accountability mechanisms in place. Finally, mix of business models. While sanitation is clearly a public service mandate and the governments and institutions are in charge, Support from the private sector is extremely valuable in resource and capacity constraint settings. Various service and business models such as private-public partnerships or build-operated transfer models already exist. Such models are beneficial to both parties and allow for a sanitation economy to emerge, which also allows for more innovations to take place in the sector. This helps the needs of various people to be met through various modalities of service. For example, a community which is present in an urban informal settlement could be served by container-based sanitation or community-managed toilets. Innovative financing mechanisms and resource recovery incentives can help maintain the affordability in service delivery. In summary, CWISE is a holistic approach that has gained traction in the last few years and is possibly the future direction of urban sanitation. It is best understood through the Manila principles on CYS. There are slightly different versions of the CYS approach and its principles, but they all come down to the basics of making urban sanitation sustainable 
and equitable. You might have also noted that most of these principles of CYS have always been around in the development agenda. But it is the first time that the sector has come together with such a holistic and unified vision. Therefore, even though CYS might seem like old wine in a new bottle, it is exactly what we need today. A way of plugging all six of these leaks in the urban sanitation agenda. If you would like to understand more about CYS and understand it in greater depth, here are three key publications that you can find in the Sandek website.